Have you ever seen or played with one of those cool plasma balls? I think most of us have over the years. I recently bought one for my son's room. It's small and powered over a USB cable. The power source is actually what inspired my curiosity into the technology. You see, USB voltage is typically quite low, usually around 5 volts and a couple of amps. Devices plugged into a standard USB port only operate between 2.5 and, say, 20 watts or so. Now, the dancing, arcing tentacles of the plasma ball aren't just hypnotizing, they look powerful enough to reanimate Frankenstein. So, what's going on here? What sorcery is this? Well, it's not sorcery, it's science. And you'll be shocked at how cool it is. Yes, I said that. I'm your mental curator, Johnny Hemberger, and you're listening to the Beyond Bones podcast from the Houston Museum of Natural Science. Tell your friends. Now, if you visit the Houston Museum of Natural Science in Sugarland, we have a few of these plasma balls installed near the chemistry exhibit for visitors to interact with. Oh yeah, did you know we have an entire museum in Sugarland? We lovingly refer to it as your neighborhood museum. And if you're already an HMNS member, your membership is valid at our Sugarland location as well. Check it out. Anyway, each time I visit, I am compelled to touch the plasma balls. Boy, I sure wouldn't survive long if I were a moth. Why are the glowing tentacles attracted to our fingers anyways? You know what? Let's get to the science by first starting with a little history. I don't think you'll be shocked at who invented the plasma ball. You might get a buzz at when it was invented, though. The plasma ball, or plasma globe as it is also known, was invented in 1894 by, of course, Nikola Tesla. It didn't look exactly like our modern plasma ball, and Tesla called the invention the, quote, inert gas discharge tube. Catchy. <laughs> hey, he was an inventor, not a marketing genius, obviously. <coughs> Edison. <coughs> Tesla invented another device of his namesake you might recall, the Tesla coil. Basically, Tesla used a Tesla coil to study high voltage reactions of various noble gases. Later in the 1970s, the technology was perfected and marketed by James Falk and MIT student Bill Parker. Bill was experimenting with rocket propulsion and noticed how high voltage electricity created plasma arcs within various noble gases. By the 1980s, plasma balls became the popular novelty we know and love today. Now, let's get to the nuts and bolts of how the technology works. Let's start with the heart of the plasma ball, the Tesla coil. This section of the podcast also explains how the seemingly low power USB power supply is able to create such a spectacular phenomenon. You see, a Tesla coil works by dramatically increasing the input voltage. Increasing voltage decreases current or amperage. Ohm's law in full effect. Once the voltage increases enough to overcome the resistance of the air around it, you get these awesome arcing tendrils of electricity searching for their way back to the ground. Almost like a snake's tongue sniffing the air for something to quote unquote bite. The Tesla coil circuit in my son's toy plasma ball takes five volts and bumps it up to around five kilovolts, or in other words, 5,000 volts and it's also taking direct current and converting it into alternating current. You know, AC, DC, and vice versa. Rock on! The 5,000 volts of alternating current is operating at a frequency of around 35 kilohertz, or 35,000 hertz. The power outlets of your house, by the way, operate at 100 volts to 250 volts and at a frequency of just 50 hertz or 60 hertz, voltages and frequencies depending on where you live. So, in this small plasma ball, 5,000 volts at 35,000 hertz sounds dangerous. But there's a term used by folks who work with electricity. The term is quote-unquote, current kills. In other words, it's not voltage that kills you, it's the amperage or current. As I mentioned earlier, 
Ohm's law, the set of equations that govern electrical behavior, dictates that increasing voltage alone comes at the cost of current. To figure out how many amps a plasma ball operates, we'll do some very basic Ohm's law math. Let's say the USB outlet is providing 5 volts at 1.5 amps. That's very typical, very demure. 1.5 amps times 5 volts equals about 7.5 watts. This plasma ball is only consuming 7.5 watts from the plug. My phone charges at up to 45 watts, for instance. A bright LED light bulb operates around 13 watts. Anyway, our plasma ball consumes about 7.5 watts. To figure out how many amps the Tesla coil circuit is producing, we'll divide the watts by the volts. So, if the plasma ball is up converting 5 volts to 5,000 volts, while still only consuming 7.5 watts, 7.5 watts divided by 5,000 volts is 0.0015 amps, or 15 milliamps. Not even close to enough to harm you beyond a weak zap of static electricity. In fact, you've probably felt worse folding clothes on a dry day. However, it could be enough to theoretically interact with a pacemaker, and the electromagnetic radiation can interfere with anything close by transmitting, receiving, or sensitive to radio waves. So that's the electricity bit sorted. The real fun is how that Tesla coil in the middle of the plasma ball behaves when surrounded by noble gas. What is a noble gas, by the way? Well, here's a definition from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. A noble gas is, quote, a gaseous chemical element that does not readily enter into chemical combination with other elements. An inert gas. Examples are helium, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon, end quote. In other words, a gas that doesn't react with anything around it chemically. Not easily, anyways. In a plasma ball, the tendrils or tentacles of electricity are interacting with the molecules of gas, creating plasma. The gas inside is usually neon, but can also be xenon, argon, krypton, or other noble gases, or even a mix of several. Now, here's something fascinating. Plasma is the most common state of matter in the universe, actually. In our case, plasma occurs when you add enough energy to gas that it superheats. In this case, that energy is electricity. In this state, it becomes a sea of positively and negatively charged particles, called ions and electrons, respectively. As these particles radiate outward, they release the energy and revert back to a lower charged state. As their energy falls back down to normal, they emit photons of visible light. This is almost exactly how the sun works as well. A giant plasma ball with a whole mess of gravity and physics tossed in. So, the electricity of the Tesla coil interacts with the gas surrounding it, creating plasma. As this plasma turns back into gas, it glows with the resulting release of photons. Pretty darn cool. But wait, mental curator. Why do these tentacles of plasma seem to want to slide into my DMs when I touch the glass? Do I just possess that plasma riz? Your riz, though sigma as it may be, does not create enough main character energy to bend the laws of physics. No cap, just take the L on that one. But your salty, clammy fingers are a tempting path of least resistance for the electricity out of the sphere and into the ground. In other words, it wants out and you are the gatekeeper. The salt of your skin is called an electrolyte. Electrolytes are required to conduct electricity through a fluid. Water alone is not conductive, but add salt and you become a welcome mat for electrical flow. Your body is an electrical device, by the way. When sports drinks advertise that they will replenish your electrolytes, that's because you lose a lot when you sweat. Low electrolytes means your brain can't send electrical signals to your body as easily as it needs. Hence, the extreme fatigue you feel if you sweat too much. You are almost literally a dead battery. Electrolytes help you stay charged, so to speak. When you touch the glass of a plasma ball, the electricity says, Man, this is our shot, boys. 
and they all pull together into a single strong line to give itself the best chance of escaping, or completing a circuit with the Earth itself. But what about the colors? The colors of the tendrils depend on the mixture of gases and the current energy state of the plasma and gas. For example, you'll notice that it appears pink at the emission point of the Tesla coil as it heats up, solid blue at its full potential in the middle of the arc, then back down to pink as it dissipates on the glass or point of contact with your finger. Plasma balls! Who knew? Thank you so much for listening to the Beyond Bones podcast. Be sure to share it with your friends. Drop us a line at podcasts at hmns.org with comments or topic suggestions. I'm your mental curator, Johnny Hemberger. Check the description for any links and goodies. And with that, as always, thanks for listening. Come out and see us at the Houston Museum of Natural Science and stay curious. Curious.